Welcome to the Sharmo Report and to our listeners on Google, Spotify, and other podcast platforms. I'm Michael A. Sharmo. Today's title, Word Crutch. The English language is once again being challenged. When smartphones made texting a, a new phenomenon, we saw the emergence of texting abbreviations and the abandonment of correct spelling, me for one. But for many, those short forms have become a normal form of our language lexicon, you know, like OMG and laugh out loud. But what has been even more destructive is how we converse with each other. Think about this. Reality TV has revealed that the command of the English language has deteriorated to the extent that if you watch those reality crime programs, like for instance, for, uh, the first 48, when police interrogate suspects, the program has to put subtitles on the screen, outlining what the suspect is actually saying in English. Just so you understand, these programs, they're shot in cities like Atlanta, New Orleans, Miami, Philadelphia, Louisville, with American-born English-speaking suspects. Not Mexicans or Spanish, English. Or a form of English, kinda. I mean, that, that's completely embarrassing. The suspect is speaking English so poorly with street slang, mispronunciation, and repetitive word crutches that you can't understand a word of English the guy's saying. So the program has to put subtitles up. I mean, it's, I mean, if we were in Scotland or certain South Asian countries where accents are thick and difficult, one can understand you need to put subtitles on. But goodness gracious, this is, this is being shot in America. Then we digress further in reality programming where individuals under 35 years of age start talking to each other. And if you put the closed captioning on your TV, it's actually worse to read than to listen to as you realize that the people don't speak in sentences. They've got no idea how to describe or explain a situation. Every second word they use is like, you know? They use the word like, cause like, it's either the way to like, kind of express themselves. Like, if you, if you like say the word like, every time that a person kind of like says like, shut up, stop saying that, it's annoying, gosh. It's absolutely terrible. I mean, I distinctly remember starting to hear that like thing starting to creep in uh, when my kids were young. So every time they said like, I parroted the word right back at them, interrupting them, in the middle of them speaking. Yeah, it may be a little impolite, but after uh, getting really ticked off, they realized how often they used it without even knowing they were saying it. I mean, they really got ticked. But amazing how some people in our society ask why they can't get a job. Like, well, you have to be able to speak intelligently in actual sentences and in clear, understandable way. But the real culprits, ladies and gentlemen, it's the parents and teachers. They do not enforce proper diction. Another one that bugs me is when someone says, me and you, or me and Carol Ann, for example. No. It's Caroline and I. It's, it's, it's you and I. You have to stop them and, and say no. If you want them to change, you need to be a vigilante pretty well. My son's friend Jesse used to say, hey, me and Dane. I said, stop. It's not that. It's Dane and I. And he would immediately correct himself. At first, the kids were absolutely embarrassed and they protested profusely. But after a little while, it just became normal for me to point it out. Eventually, I realized Jesse said, you and I. And at one time, he gave me one of those little winks because he kind of was, ah, he didn't catch me. But it worked. I wonder if he'll do that to his kids or his friends. Another one, please, folks. You, you use an ax to chop wood, you know, right? That sharp metal thing. You don't use an ax for a question. You just ask a question. That's just laziness and disregard of the pronunciation. I'd be axing a question. It's not axing. You're asking. Another one is like uh, that uh, especially. Okay. It's not especially. It's especially. Not especially. Stop using it if you can't say it. Stop them. I mean, it, it's, I mean, goodness. These examples present a very unattractive and somewhat unintelligent picture of one because of the way that they speak. Another one that absolutely just drives me crazy is, you feel me? Who in God's name thought for a moment that firstly I wanted to feel this guy? No, I don't feel you. 
I'm trying to talk to you and ask you a question. He then goes on and every, every sentence with, you feel me? Repel, you feel me? You feel me? No! Next is dog. What the heck? Did, did, did you forget my name? Woof. Huh? Did you forget my name? Or is that the urban replacement for every white guy who says brother? There's another one. Hey, brother, how's it going? I'm good, dog. Everything good? Yeah, brother, it's all good. <laughs> like, what? Like, like, where have we come? I mean, I do have to laugh, though, when I read Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's closed captioning. You know, please understand, closed captioning, in other words, they're generated by voice recognition. No one's sitting there typing this stuff out. And it converts exactly what is said to the text you see on the screen. So when Trudeau speaks with almost every second word as, uh, he talks and uh, uh, thinks that uh, while he gets to his point and uh, goes to his next point, well, uh, goodness gracious. I mean, he's the worst. I mean, he sounds like a ball player after a doubleheader. Uh, it was a long game, and uh, stop it. It's annoying the heck out of everybody who's listening, and uh, it's boring. Goodness. As a Canadian, though, we are regularly accused of using the A, but that little crutch is less than ever. Please, when your kids, loved ones, or people that you really care about fall into a word crutch, call them out. Say it right back to them. And when they watch reality TV, turn the closed captioning on and show them the worst offender in the world, and that's the word like, the word crutch. By the way, Jesse, you, and Dane, and I, <laughs> let's have a drink. Finally, let's uh, please, please like, share, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And for more pieces, visit thecharbonreport.com. Until next time, God bless, and stay safe. I'm Michael A. Charbon for the Charbon Report. <laughs>